Happy Sunday. This week, I thought that I would take you guys on a little bit of a garage gym tour. Now, this is technically not my garage gym. I am at my girlfriend's house. This is her garage. 95% of this equipment is hers, but I'm here a lot. I use this gym a lot, and while it's not technically mine, I feel like it's still something that could be interesting for you guys to see about how a general person could potentially set up a garage gym, um, especially one that is conducive to CrossFit. Before we get into the tour, I do just wanna take a minute to thank Gainsbox for sponsoring this video. So, for those of you that don't know, Gainsbox, is a fitness subscription box and it's got things like apparel, equipment, snacks, supplements. Um, and each one is curated to kind of fit this fitness lifestyle. It's not even specifically CrossFit. And each box is worth about double the value of what you paid. So these boxes come with a lot of cool stuff and a lot of the stuff I've received in my boxes I'm still using to this day. Like for example, this crew deck. And also this sports bra. And they also are sometimes curated by some of our favorite athletes like Brooke Enns has had a couple boxes I think. Josh Bridges did a box recently. Noah Olson also just did a box and this box is actually still on sale until Wednesday the 18th. So if you want Noah's box, get on that. But. This stuff is pretty cool, and if you're interested in subscribing to Gainsbox, you can use my code JORDAN for 40% off at thegainsbox.com. And I did do the math on how much this gym um, costs, but we're gonna wait till the end to talk about that. Right now, we're just gonna look at all the different kinds of equipment that we have in this garage that allows us to get in some good workouts and um, not feel limited. So come on with me. Oh right, you're just a tripod, so let me pick you up and take you with me. Uh, but I guess let's start with what's underneath my feet. So we've got rubber flooring. We've got about six floor mats, all from extreme training equipment. They're four by six and three quarter inch thick. <laughs> the first thing that I come by is this fan. Uh, I didn't include that in the breakdown at the end, but obviously a fan is pretty important if you're working out in a garage in Southern California in the summer. So besides the fan and the flooring, first thing we'll talk about is this easy bar. Like I said, not technically my gym. Uh, my girlfriend does a lot more bodybuilding style workouts. Next, this wall ball. Uh, this wall ball is a 16 pound wall ball from Fringe Sport. A lot of the times in my programming, um, we will do heavy wall balls instead so that come a qualifier or the open or competition, those 14 pound wall balls feel a lot lighter. We don't have an official target, um, but there's a telephone pole in her driveway where we measured out nine and 10 feet. After that, we've got this kettlebell. So this is a 44 pound rogue kettlebell. It doesn't take up a lot of room. You can get a really good workout using a kettlebell uh, and there's like a whole bunch of different kinds of things you can do with this. So after the kettlebell, you can see we've got some dumbbells here. So we have a 35 pound dumbbell, a 25 pound dumbbell, and two 15 pound dumbbells. The 25 and 15s are mostly for bodybuilding stuff. The 35 uh, we use for bodybuilding and CrossFit workouts because that's usually the prescribed weight for women. Have to make sure she's not listening. But uh, <laughs> uh, I also uh, bought her for Christmas a set of loadable dumbbells so you have custom um, weights which is a cheaper uh, because you only need the one set of loadable dumbbells and then the weights and B takes up a lot less room the ones I bought are from Titan Fitness because they were a little bit cheaper and your girl is on a budget um, but Rogue also has a really nice pair these dumbbells are actually all from Amazon <laughs> okay Let's move down the gym. So as we move towards the back of the gym, I'll just give a quick <coughs> shout out to this whiteboard. Um, I just think it's something that's helpful to have. Beneath the whiteboard, we've got our weight vests. Both of our weight vests are from 511. Um, they're actually the same exact weight vest, just different colors. And inside we've got the Rogue 
weight vest plates, um, which I believe are like five and three quarter pounds each. So all in all, uh, the weight vest ends up equaling 14 pounds, which is usually the prescribed women's weight. Okay, now back up again. And now we move on to the main course, the rack. So this squat rack is actually a cage, which means that it is not just these two posts with some feet, it is four posts with some pull-up bars. What that means is that we can do like pull-ups and toes to bar and bar muscle-ups if the ceiling was tall enough, but it's not. <laughs> and we also have a pair of gymnastics rings for um, ring dips and ring rows and stuff like that. The rack is from Fringe Sport. These rings are from Amazon also. <laughs> You'll notice that underneath the rack, we do have a platform. We literally just bought a four by eight section of plywood from Home Depot, pre-sanded, and then we stained it ourselves. Really easy pretty cheap and then speaking of plywood if you'll move a little to your right you'll see over here we actually have a handstand push-up station exactly the same scenario as our platform we bought a four by eight section of plywood from home depot um, and just painted it black <laughs> and <clears throat> you'll see I built this myself and I'm really proud, so I'm gonna show you. You'll notice that at the bottom of her garage, she kind of has this lip here. So in order for the handstand push-up station to um, be stable and A, not cause damage to her garage wall and B, not collapse underneath the uh, force of our feet, we put some stabilizers in here. We've got one at the bottom. We've got one here. We've got two more along the top. This doesn't move, it stays put, that is important. And we've just got some kind of extra matting down there, just extra padding for our head, you know? <laughs> and so as we keep moving, we've got the barbells. So that's a um, rogue barbell rack and three rogue barbells. The top one is a 20 kilo bar, and uh, the two below it are both 15 kilo bars. And below that, we've got all of our weights. So all in all, we have about, we have 500 pounds worth of weights. We have four 45 pound bumper plates, uh, two 35 pound, four 25 pound, six 15 pound, six 10 pounds, and then four five pounds, and four two and a half pounds. And then we also just got an extra special set of 10 pound plates. And those are two 10 pound plates made to look like donuts. Um, but like I said, there's about 500 pounds here, including uh, the small metal plates and the donut plates. All of the bumper plates came from Fringe Sport and these smaller metal plates came from Amazon. So if we keep moving, <laughs> Whew, just getting up and sitting down over and over again is getting tough on me, you guys. These particular resistance bands help with a lot of bodybuilding stuff, um, especially because obviously we don't have access to like machines here. So resistance bands like these can be kind of like hooked onto the rig um, and used that way. We also have a regular old green resistance band over there. I mostly use it for um, mobility reasons. And then we've got We've got this plyo box. This plyo box is from Extreme Training Equipment. It is a 20 inch, 24 inch, 30 inch plyo box. So we have all of your typical CrossFit options. It's not in this gym, but I also have the Wags and Weights plyo box. Um, they used to make a plyo box with the same dimensions that doubles at a doghouse. It's currently housed at Strange. Um, but once I stop forgetting to get it, it will then live in this garage so that we each have a plyo box. Um, for wads and stuff like that. Above all of this stuff, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things like the fan that I don't include in the breakdown at the end. I keep my old lifters here. I also have my old belt. Up here is all stuff that probably your average CrossFitter has in their gym bag and my gym bag just stays in my trunk of my car. Now we're going to back it up a little bit. And right in front of that wall, you'll see we have a bench here for benching. Um, it also comes in handy for a couple other things. That bench is also from Fringe Sport. And then the grand finale, our most prized possession, we have an assault bike. 
So this bad boy actually was a joint purchase, um, one that I kind of instigated and pushed for, uh, but I think it was a really great addition to this garage gym. You know, when you're at home, your only cardio options are like burpees, running, and double unders. Um, and there are a lot of reasons why you may not want to do either of those things, but still want to get some cardio in. Um, you know, whether you've got an injury and you need to keep it low impact or like our sidewalks are like really <laughs> bumpy and like not great to run on for our calves and shins. I'm really glad we bought this, which might sound crazy to some of you. Um, I think it was a really good addition to the home gym. And I think if you are going to be a CrossFitter with a home gym and you can afford it, either getting a bike or a rower or a skier is, uh, definitely something to invest in, investing in your health, you know? But with that, that is the conclusion of the garage gym tour. But of course there's different degrees of home gyms, right? There's gonna be home gyms that are just a jump rope and a kettlebell. And then there's gonna be home gyms that are, you know, maybe you have a kettlebell and a couple dumbbells and a squat rack and a barbell. And then there's gonna be more built out gyms kind of like this where we've got the kettlebell and the dumbbell and the squat rack, but we also have the assault bike and the plyo box and uh, the handstand push-up station, um, stuff like that. But I also love being in the gym and I love working out with people. You really just can't beat that box environment. All in all, I did the math yesterday. So if everything in this gym were to be bought full price, everything I just mentioned, oh, including the chalk bucket, which I forgot to mention, but there's a chalk bucket full of chalk there. This gym would cost just over $4,000. But what I will say is that A, it was not all purchased at once. You know, I put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears over that handstand push-up station, for example, that has not been there the whole time. This bike is a recent purchase and we're actually still making payments on it through Amazon. And uh, like the dumbbells and the easy bar and the wall ball, like stuff like that, it, it was kind of bought over time. Um, it was like a slow build out that now has turned into um, this very cool space. And B, a lot of it was either bought significantly on sale, like huge Black Friday sales or, or other kind of huge sales like that, or it was sent to us by companies uh, that have been kind enough to help support me um, and who I have worked with. I absolutely think that it's worth it um, if you can make it happen, of course. But yeah, I think that concludes the garage gym tour for us. I hope this was like interesting or like helpful. If you guys have any questions about this garage gym, please feel free to drop it in the comments. I will link all of this equipment in the description just in case you guys are curious about either where it came from or what each individual uh, piece of equipment costs. But other than that, that's all I got. And I'll see you next week, and you'll see whether or not we qualified for Wadapalooza.